paper is a pretty inexpensive commodity that's easily used and just throw in, costing as little as half a cent for each sheet of paper. Today, we are only becoming conscious of our paper usage as environmental waste, especially as we head further and further into the paperless digital world. This makes it hard to imagine that for a significant period of time, there wasn't a concept of paper, and its invention was a pretty big game changer in history. Today, we're gonna explore that and see how much it would cost to make a sheet of paper starting all the way from scratch with a tree. Everything we use comes from 8,000 generations of collective innovation and discovery. But could an average person figure it all out themselves and work their way from the Stone Age to today? That's the question we're exploring. Each week, I try to take the next step forward in human history. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. Beyond the things we attempt to make in our videos, another big challenge is just trying to produce the videos themselves and managing all the different footage that comes in countless different formats. Today's sponsor can help take care of some of that pain of managing and working with video. Wondershare UniConverter can convert over 1,000 different file formats, whether video, image, or audio. It can help optimize your exports for YouTube, Instagram, and even help you make GIFs or GIFs. It also features a video downloader, a screen recorder, and its own video editor. All those are very useful tools when it comes to making videos. In fact, I use it to make this ad itself. Solve all your video conversion needs with a free trial of Uniconverter today. So far, our focus has primarily been on the Near East with some of the first developments of humanity's discovery of agriculture, bronze, and iron. But now, we begin to start to expand our focus a little more to the East as we cross into what is considered the four great inventions of China, several of which we'll be covering in our upcoming videos. Today, we start with the invention of paper. Previously, we explored some of the predecessors of paper that were used in the Near East with clay tablets, and papyrus, both of which offered some challenges with their frailty and expensive production methods. In China, however, a cheaper and more effective solution was found by the production of paper using the inner bark of mulberry trees. Soon afterwards, hemp was added, usually from old cloths or fishing nets. So let's attempt to recreate their process and invent our own paper. For that, we'll need to source the fibers to make the paper, we'll need to construct an instrument to help break down the fibers, and we'll need a frame and loose cloth to use to form the sheets of paper. First up, we need the mulberry bark and hemp fibers. While raising silkworms earlier this year, we discovered some mulberry trees nearby. This inside part is the part that eventually breaks down and gets made into paper. Paper was first made using the mulberry tree. We found one, we're gonna take a few branches and take it back to the studio and see if we can make some paper. Hopefully it works. No, that one's alive. Oh, there we go. Big boy. Get the ax. Don't film this. Beautiful. Thought I'd bring the sticks out for a beautiful day at the lake. <laughs> a nice way to make sure that the sticks are going to be ready to be debarked is to soak them. So I'm going to throw them in the lake, wait a day, come back, and then start the debarking. Looks like there's some ice. <laughs> beautiful day. Let's just throw it out and see if it works. <laughs> no. <laughs> Make a pocket to slip the sticks into. <laughs> okay. Eating a bit more bark, we trimmed a large branch and proceeded to cut up and also soak it. The rest of the wood will be useful for some of the other tools we'll be needing to make. Next up, some urban harvesting of wild cannabis hemp. All right, all along the train tracks here, we have found a very special crop that we'll be using <laughs> to make paper. Okay, I think we can just kind of, okay. <laughs> Next, to break up the hemp, beat it with a stick. This helps separate the hard inner core from the stringy outer fibers that we're after. Thoroughly soaked, the mulberry branches should be ready to be debarked. These sticks smell bad. So we're going to peel the bark off and eventually we're going to only want the inner bark and taking the dark bark off. Ooh. And then as you can see, this one will separate out. Get rid of it. Cool. 
Ooh. Okay. With all the fibers prepped, next comes the laborious process of breaking down the fibers even more. We'll start first by boiling everything over a fire. Meanwhile, let's prep the final tools we'll need for making paper. Using the saw we forged in my last video, cut the mulberry branch down into some pieces to form a large mallet we can use to beat and break down the fiber. Hammer. Next, the decal. Basically, just need to construct a square frame to hold a piece of cloth the fibers will collect on. So let's use my saw to cut some square pieces of lumber. Next, to attach them, let's try and forge some crude iron nails. For the loose cloth, we still have the fabric left over from when Kate built a warp weighted loom and wove it. The tools all built back to the boiling fibers. Adding the soda ash. All right now, we'll bring it up to a boil. Alright, so now that we've boiled the paper, well, the soon-to-be paper, in order to break it down, I'm gonna use this mallet and give it a few good whacks. So this process is actually gonna take a while. Oh god. <laughs> oh, oh god.
We have processed this quite a bit already, but it could still use a couple more cycles of boiling it, giving it a one, two, a couple more smacks, and getting all these big chunks out. So right now I'm gonna go through and pick out the bigger chunks that didn't get broken down. This guy, gone. This, don't wanna see ya. Hey! Over the next few days, we continue to alternate between boiling and mashing it and picking any large chunks out of it. So these are our paper fibers after they've been boiled and they're still a little bit too long. So we're going to attempt to chop them up and so they'll process <laughs> a little easier. All right, <laughs> it's kind of working. All right, so that uh, kind of turned out to be a little bit of a mess as the Kopesh is historically more of a slashing tool versus chopping um, and it Really, you can tell. So, I think I'm just gonna do some handiwork here and try to break it up by hand, make it a little more manageable. All right, so we have a nice mush here of mulberry and hemp fiber. Next, we can add it to the water and create a nice slurry that will then pull the screen through. Loosely woven cloth on the wood frame that should collect a nice even layer of paper onto the screen, which will then dump it onto the felt here and then stack some rocks on it to press out any water, let it dry overnight, and by morning, we should hopefully have some paper. Great. What a beautiful piece of paper. So I think that worked. The Dreckel is not, not the greatest. Uh, very crude instrument, but it seemed to have done its job. Straightening the water, held it to the frame. It was very hard getting it to be uh, kind of attachable and detachable. So that makes it a little bit more difficult when you have to like remove it and they just have crude nails to hold it on. But it did work. I think we got a decent sheet of paper. We'll see how well it dries under the weight. Well, the paper dries, let's get ready to write on them by turning back to my written language I started at the beginning of the year. As with any major developing civilization, it was important that we achieve the milestone of inventing our own written language and record. So replicating the process many languages took, I pretended written language was entirely forgotten and built a new one based off a of phonetic sound, each represented by a pictograph, then simplified them to be easier to draw. Since then, I left my language to my Discord channel to work on evolving it for me, as all written language has through thousands and thousands of years of use. Now checking back on it several months later, I have a new generation of text that has gotten simpler and clearer to write, and in the process starts to lose any relation to the original pictographs, very similar to the evolution of the modern alphabet. Well, I'll let these guys dry overnight, and then I can take off the weights and see how they turned out. <laughs> Okay, so after drying overnight, we have the completed sheets of paper. Getting an even consistent thickness to it is definitely a challenge. Some of them are a little less compacted, um, but the end result is definitely paper. So it's definitely uh, an art to be learned, but this is definitely a piece of paper. 
definitely succeeded. Could write on this. Pretty satisfying how, how well it actually turned out. Years ago, I tried then to do a wood pulp paper and uh, failed miserably. Before this, we kind of explored some of the options of clay tablets and papyrus that uh, had issues of being really difficult to produce and a little bit fragile. So paper is uh, pretty durable, and most importantly, it's relatively cheap to produce. Kind of revolutionized things by making it uh, cheaper and easier to use. However, that's after you've kind of already figured out the system and are able to maximize it to make some huge batches. To figure it out on our own and build all the tools, it took about 28 hours of labor to uh, make just a single sheet of paper. So using modern minimum wage, $228. Kind of expensive. Paper was very useful and was widely used in China after its invention. Possible uses were both for writing and also as wrapping paper. So we're gonna use our paper and use the newest generation of our language to write a letter. And Lauren's gonna wrap some presents for our patrons. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.